let me just constrain myself to a single input, single output case. And uh, let's say the single input, single output situation uh, is given in K, uh, using a transfer function as Ys is equal to some Gs us, where y is the output and u is the input. Okay. Now, uh, earlier what we had said was that u transpose y, this is the same in the case of the electrical uh, circuit v dot i is exactly the same as u transpose y. And we are saying that u transpose y integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, this particular quantity should be greater than 0, then the system is passive. Okay. Now, if you are going to take the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of u transpose y, one could take the Fourier transforms. And if one takes the Fourier transforms, this is the same as okay, there would be some scaling factor k and minus infinity to plus infinity of u j omega uh, star times g j omega uh, well g j omega star y j omega. But of course, this u transpose y I could really write it down as half of u transpose y plus half of y transpose u. So, uh, sort of making it symmetric. Therefore, along with this expression, there will be this other expression also, which is y j omega star uh, g j omega u j omega. Okay. So, this integral, uh, of course, this is over d omega. So, uh, this integral would be equivalent to this integral after having taken the Fourier transforms. So, we have taken Fourier transforms. Okay. Now, if you look at this expression, this is the same as saying, uh, well, I think I have made a mistake. Um, sorry. Okay, so, let me do it again. So, uh, if you are looking at this from minus infinity to infinity of u transpose y dt, this is in the time domain. This is equal, equal to some constant of proportionality. Of course, this u transpose y, uh, u transpose y I could write it out as uh, a half u transpose y plus a half y transpose u. Okay. Now, uh, I could uh, I could now pass over using Fourier transforms into the uh, into the uh, uh, j omega uh, uh, into the omega domain, and I will have again integral from minus infinity to infinity of u j omega star y j omega uh, plus y j omega star u j omega. Okay. So, the last time uh, the mistake I made was that I put this g j omega in between. Now, uh, I can I can bring in the g j omega by substituting you see why once you have taken the transforms y j omega is really g j omega times u j omega. And so, substituting this in there we would end up with integral minus infinity to plus infinity. I am just forgetting the proportionality constant. You have u j omega star multiplying g j omega plus g j omega star multiplying u j omega. Okay. Now, uh, of course, when I write this down, there are several assumptions that are going in. The assumptions that are going in are the following. For example, uh, we will assume that u is a compactly supported trajectory. That means, if this is the time axis, u is non-zero only over a compact set. Now, if u is non-zero over a compact set, then it is easy to take the Fourier transform. It makes sense to take the Fourier transform. 
Now, if u is compactly supported because uh, the transfer function tells us that y is equal to g times u, this is the equation. Therefore, the, the Fourier transform of y also makes sense and if u is compactly supported in the circuit, we would as you, uh, we, we can expect that y is also compactly supported. And so, then it makes sense to take the Fourier transforms. And now, if you take the Fourier transforms, the Fourier transform of y and the Fourier transform of u is related in this way. And so, once you have this expression, you substitute and you get this. And now, this is this integral is greater than or equal to 0. So, if you look at this last expression, whatever u you choose, this expression must be positive. And uh, now, one can show that this expression would only be positive if g j omega plus g j omega star is greater than or equal to 0. But this here is really the real part of g j omega. And so, the real part of g j omega must be greater than or equal to 0. So, um, this condition is the condition for passivity and the condition for passivity translates to and here of course, we are only considering single input, single output case. So, the single input, single output case the y and the u, the output and the input are related to the through this transfer function g of s and then what this translates to by this set of manipulations is that the real part of g j omega must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, let us look at uh, situations where the real part of g j omega is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. What does that mean? Now, uh, you see the expression that we had is g j omega plus g j omega star, but this is the same as saying g j omega plus g minus j omega. Now, if g j omega can be written as a plus j b, then this will turn out to be a minus j b. So, the imaginary part gets cancelled out and you are just left with the real part. Okay. So, this being greater than or equal to 0 is the same as saying that the real part of the transfer function g j omega must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Uh, how to translate this condition into something more meaningful for us? Okay. One way we can translate this condition into something more meaningful is you see the image of g j omega is the Nyquist plot. Okay. So, saying that the real part of g j omega is greater than or equal to 0 is the same as saying that the Nyquist plot of the transfer function should lie in the first or the second quadrant, because then the real part of g j omega is going to be positive. Okay. So, what this translates to or whatever we have been doing till now, the, this, uh, this result that we have got, what it translates to is that the real part Of, uh, of the transfer function g j omega should be positive yeah and and what that means is that uh, the nyquist plot is in first and uh, uh, fourth quadrant, first and fourth quadrant. Okay. But as it turns out, this Nyquist plot being in the first and the fourth quadrant is not a complete characterization of passivity. Okay. Uh, that is because um, Mathematically, the Nyquist plot lying in the first and the fourth quadrant 
may not necessarily translate into uh, that particular condition that we had where you have uh, a storage function and supply function and that interpretation that you have.